superhero is defined by the greatness of their adversary. Where would Batman be without the Joker? Captain America without the Red Skull. Ant-Man without Yellow Jacket. Obviously, in the comics, Yellow Jacket is Ant-Man, and the character in the movie was an amalgamation of those traits with Darren Cross. Even though he ultimately felt like a ripoff of Obadiah Stane in Iron Man. Speaking of Iron Man, who do you think his greatest adversary is, Amy? Mandarin? Justin Hammer? The possibility of a future where he's not played by Robert Downey Jr.? It's Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, and Jose Cuervo. Ah, those are all types of alcohol. Cheers to that. Smart cookie. In the famous Demon in a Bottle storyline, Tony Stark succumbed to alcoholism, and it was groundbreaking. We were used to seeing superheroes save the world, but could they just sit in a bar and drink a soda and be okay? <sighs> oh, yeah. Hey, Tony, Tony, you should not be driving in this current state. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna... I'm gonna punch that moon. No, listen, you cannot punch the moon. Hey, come on, Jarvis. Uh, Sir, so I would advise against it. Listen, uh, Jarvis, punch, moon punch, go! You don't see a lot of superheroes getting drunk, besides Wolverine, who'd down a few Molsons, and Hulk, who basically is the living embodiment of alcohol. <laughs> but you also can't really imagine suave-ass Bruce Wayne ordering a Shirley Temple. Give me a Shirley Temple. Case in point, kind of weird. It'd be sort of sad if I saw the thing sipping in O'Doul's. And seeing the kind of crazy, world-threatening stuff that heroes do, you can't really blame them for indulging. You can when it goes too far. In the issue, Demon in a Bottle, he accidentally killed somebody with his suit and then went on a massive drinking binge and eventually came back home and was so horrible and belligerent to Jarvis that Jarvis quit. And it takes uh, his assistant, Bethany Cabe, assistant slash some off and on girlfriend, Bethany Cabe to uh, sort of pull him out of that funk. It's dangerous to get drunk behind the wheel of a car. I can't imagine it being any safer inside a mechanized war suit. Yeah, and there's no Uberman to come and take you home after you've thwarted Loki's latest plan. Not to mention, if you throw up in one of those things, or pee yourself in the suit. Yeah, I can't imagine it feeling very good when the guy who's dressed as a flag is telling you that you're getting carried away. Hey, do you think Iron Man ever got pulled over? Uh, hold on, I just gotta... Put my suit down. <laughs> uh, what can I ID you for, officer? Walk this line right here. I I can I can walk it. I can wheel it. I can drift past it. I can hover over it. I could make that line in 0 .02 seconds if you'd like. That would be more. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm an adventure. We've seen drug use in comics before. Spider-Man's friend Harry Osborn took LSD, and Green Arrow's sidekick Speedy was hooked on heroin. This guy named Speedy ends up being a drug addict. Was his friend Chokey into autoerotic asphyxiation? But there's something so honest and real about struggling with alcoholism, and that it wasn't a supporting character that was dealing with it, but the main guy in the book you were reading, and you were helplessly watching him throw it all away. With the added bonus of not having to smell him. Cheers. It smells like uh, gin, tears, pop off, nail polish remover, still cologne, old spice, all spice, and uh, probably s some more tears. I don't even know if half the time he wears clothes. I mean, you know, you go bare balls inside an iron suit, and how long are you gonna last before you're making cheese? You can never be an Avenger or design a bunch of new armors, but you can do too many shots of Jaeger. I call that Thursday afternoon. <laughs> you have a problem. Stop. It was always this underlying theme, this underlying concept. At any moment, Tony Stark could relapse and go back into alcoholism. He's always that kind of that cocksure, self-absorbed, in control of the situation type persona. Now, whenever he gets in a situation where he has no control over himself, he doesn't want anyone to know that, and so the cover just mounts and mounts and mounts. You know, and even in, in the Civil War story, there was actually this major page, this single page in the event, where he had addressed the nation and said, my name's Tony Stark and I'm an alcoholic. And that was really important because that was one of the only moments in Marvel Comics when Tony Stark had come out and admitted that he had a problem, that he was trying to correct it. That's one of the important things about a lot of superheroes is taking a concept of a hero and saying they stand up for the greater good. They follow the old school superhero archetype and saying, now let's introduce something that makes them human. For some characters, it's introducing a addiction of sorts. I think some superheroes definitely get addicted to using their powers. It would be kind of hard not to if they have these amazing powers and using their powers is what gets them gratitude and affirmation. I mean, if I had superpowers, I would probably be asking myself all day long, who am I without these powers? 
That's a really hard question to deal with. Tony loses everything after drinking, and when he goes to sober up, he's got to give his suit to Jim Rhodes, who fills in as Iron Man for a while. License suspended. I wish we could have seen him having to take the bus everywhere and go to battle armor traffic school. That's not a thing. And doesn't Jim Rhodes sound like a type of whiskey? Look, Tony's alcoholism is something that they go back to in the comics sometimes. That's the thing about alcoholism. It's a disease that never goes away. Like Shia LaBeouf. It was his most shameful moment in his life. There was that one story in the 90s where he's replaced by a teenage version of himself, and that one year in the 70s where his mask had a nose for no reason at all. The only reason I drink is to forget that. Me too. He was a rich man who had it all, but watching him redeem himself and get his ass together, it made for great stories, Amy. Mm-hmm. Plus, I got all this tequila. And here I thought that his favorite drink was Thor Loco. <laughs> I need more drink. I want to get more drinks. All of us. Genius. Billionaire. Playboy. Philanthropist. You don't have to be all four. Correction, any of those. To channel your inner Tony Stark, thanks to T-Fury. Check out tfury.com slash geek and sundry. Plus, you get to check out some of our favorite designs, too. We've actually gotten to partner up with the amazing folks at T-Fury, and this is just too cool. So oh cool. my god. I think my shirt's You cooler. already love their shirts. You already, already I love, love their shirts. shirts. Actually, no, I think that shirt's cooler. <laughs> I no, mean. I think this one is. No. Hmm, but you've got the, the Lucky Charms. But you've got the Calvin and Hobbes.